Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior on this Palm Sunday morning. I am Reverend Rebecca Luter, pastor here at Farmington Presbyterian, along with our Director of Christian Education, Doug Barr, our Director of Music, Jim Thrash, our accompanist, Tom Bryant, and our choir members, Becky Hutchins, Chris Luter, and Tucker Williams. As we gather in the midst of this season of social distancing, may we be reminded that we are not isolated, for God is with us. If this is your first time to gather with the Farmington family, we want to extend a special welcome to you. We hope that you find this to be a place that feels like home, and we hope that you will come to find your home in God's family here with the Farmington family. Session has at this time suspended all church activities in response to the call to practice social distancing during this time of coronavirus spread. If you are in need of pastoral care, please call me, Reverend Rebecca, at 901-674-8000. The bulletin is available on our website in addition to this recording, and we encourage you to follow along and to participate in worship fully wherever you are. For God gathers us, all brothers and sisters in Christ, under God's wings. Let us worship our Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us worship the King. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who is lauded as royalty, yet rides a lowly donkey. Blessed is the one who is followed by crowds, yet knows his strength comes from quiet time with God. Behold, our King comes, setting aside might and power to model humility and obedience. We will follow him, carrying joy on our lips and hope in our hearts, and laying our love before him, 
to prepare the way for his glorious entrance. Jesus rode into Jerusalem, not as a conquering king, but in humility, the servant king, ready to complete the task for which he had walked this world. God calls us in our lives to be like Jesus, who humbled himself even to the point of death on the cross in order to be transformed into a new life and fuller life. Yet we often fear the risk and change which new growth involves. Let us confess the places in our lives where we have been reluctant to answer God's call. Transforming God, we confess that we are like the crowds shouting Hosanna. We are eager to welcome you as king, but resist your call to give our lives sacrificially. We are restless, yet forget to find our rest in you. We profess to be disciples, but we are not willing to study your word and learn your ways. Forgive us, Lord, and guide us to become ones who come in the name of the Lord. Make us humble, make us prayerful, make us obedient. The psalmist says, I trust in you, O Lord. You are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love, Lord. In Christ, God hears. God answers. 
God sets us free. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us unite our voices with our brothers and sisters around the world using the most ecumenical of our creeds, the Nicene Creed. Let us together declare what it is we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. open our hearts this day through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may enter into the coming Holy Week with our hearts and minds set on the source of life and peace Jesus Christ our Savior Amen our first reading is Psalm 118 verses 1 and 2 and 19 through 29 listen for the word of the Lord give thanks to the Lord for he is good His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks 
for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. Listen now for the word of the Lord. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. time of the Passover and the people of God were hopeful that perhaps this year God would deliver them from the oppression of Roman rule. There was a prophet, a man named Jesus, who had been teaching and healing and attracting a large following. The authorities in the temple were resentful, outraged, threatened. The people believed he could be the Messiah. They were calling him the son of David like he was going to be God's anointed king, the next to rule in the line of King David. It had been 14 generations since King David ruled. The high priest and the elders had grown quite comfortable interpreting and administering the rules themselves. Matthew tells us that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. The verb here is used to describe what happens when there is an earthquake. The whole city was shaken. I'm reminded of an incident that took place several years ago during a visit by our state evaluators to the day school. One of the, student, one of the standards by which our stars are given is the effectiveness of our disciplinary plans and actions. And if you want to get the most points, you never say no or stop. Some of us who have been home for a few weeks might realize how effective that can be. In one of the three-year-old rooms, a little boy had an idea. 
to move the wooden spoon from the kitchen over to the science area where the fish tank was. And he proceeded to pretend play by stirring the fish tank. Not so gently. And the teacher tried her best to maintain calm and not use the word stop or no and suggest that perhaps the fish didn't like to be stirred or that maybe he could find something else to pretend to stir. And the little boy just kept stirring as if he were whipping egg whites to a peak. That's what's happening in Jerusalem. The whole city is stirred like that fish in the fish tank. Desperation and despair motivated people gathered by the roadside that day as Jesus rode into town to shout, Hosanna! Now, we today tend to associate Hosanna with joyful parades of children waving palm branches. And I have to admit, I really am sad that we're missing our children's choir singing today like we had planned. It is disappointing that the children didn't parade in at the beginning of worship and hand me their palm branches so that we could fill the vases with palm branches at the front of the sanctuary. Yet perhaps we can even more fully appreciate the shouts of the crowd this year. Hosanna means save us. Their shouts were certainly filled with hope and joy at the possibility that Jesus was the Messiah that they had waited for for so long. But the hope and the joy was all the more poignant against the realities of their fears that permeated their everyday lives. Church historians and statistical researchers look back over the crises of the 20th century and see that crisis has always increased church attendance. The crowds come when our hearts cry out, Hosanna, save us! For a few weeks. And then attendance returns to normal or even drops. Why is that? Why does attendance come to a peak and then drop in the midst and in the after effects of a crisis. I think it's the same reason that the crowds changed their shouts that Passover week in Jerusalem. As Jesus entered, they cried out, Hosanna! But by the end of the week, their cries were, Crucify him! What they expected to happen didn't. Jesus didn't come in and whip up rebellion. Instead, he continued to share God's word. He taught both in words and actions the greatest commandment, loving the Lord our God with all heart, soul, and mind, and loving neighbor as self. He gathered with those closest to him to eat together and to remember God's faithfulness throughout all the ages and all the crises that every generation had faced. And he drew away to the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed to lay down his will and to accept God's will. At a deeper level than those in Jerusalem could understand. God heard their cry and answered, Hosanna, save us. God did. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
The Greek word translated blessed here is not the same word that Matthew uses in the Beatitudes. That word for blessed is makarios, and that means recipients of God's favor. The word for blessed here is not related to makarios. It's eulogehemenos and means worthy of praise. Worthy of praise is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I hope that in this time you will share our worship services with your friends and your families. I hope you will share the link on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and email and text. I hope that people will come and turn to church in this crisis as we all feel like a st fish stirred up in a fish tank, crying out, Hosanna, Lord, save us. And I hope that we will adequately proclaim the good news that even if it seems like everything is going wrong, even if it seems like things are not turning out the way that we expected them to or even hoped for them to god is answering your cry as paul wrote to the church at rome we know to those who love god god works all things together for good throughout scripture and throughout the ages, we have known through experience and declared that God's steadfast love endures forever. Paul's statement has a second part. For those who love God, God's works, God works all things together for good. For those who have been called according to God's purposes. It is in following the example of Jesus and laying down our will and accepting God's will that good comes out of difficult times, crisis situations, the shaky, stirred up times of our lives. As session members have called every member household over and over again, we hear, I am glad to help to deliver food or supplies to those who shouldn't get out. Members are making cloth masks for hospitals and medical personnel and vulnerable people to allow their N95 masks to last longer. People are pausing and having longer conversations with their loved ones. Family time is enriching the lives of our children. Look around. Where do you see good? Perhaps our cries of Hosanna, save us, will be answered in a way different than we hoped or expected. But they will be answered. Let us in this time be faithful in following the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Remember those things he did that week in Jerusalem? He shared God's word. He taught loving God and loving neighbor, both with his words and his actions. He gathered those closest to him to eat together and to remember God's faithfulness throughout all generations and all crises. He drew away and prayed and he laid down his will to accept God's will. This Holy Week, may you and I do the same. Maybe not in the ways that we normally would expect to do. Be creative. How can you share God's word? Love God and neighbor Connect with loved ones and remember God's faithfulness. Draw away and pray. How will you lay down your will 
and accept God's will. For it is then that good will come and your prayers of Hosanna will be answered. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the Farmington family, we have a tradition of sharing our prayer concerns with one another, and it has been heartening to receive back the responses of session members as they have called you and you have shared with them your prayer concerns. I hope that you will take the time to look at your happenings and to be in prayer for those who are listed in your bulletin in the happenings. And I hope that when we come to the time of prayer within the prayers of the people, that you will speak your prayers where you are. Let us pray together. Lord Hosanna, save us. We have shouted it with gusto for years. Did we really know what we meant? Do we realize even now what we need? In the midst of unknown, we are painfully aware that we are not in control of tomorrow. Remind us that you taught us not to worry about tomorrow and reassure us that your love for us is all the security we need. Hosanna, save us. Be the guide for world leaders. Shine your light in dark places of evil powers. Bring down governments that lord over their citizens, perpetuating injustice whose policies leave their people living in poverty or war zones. Hopeless. Helpless. Hosanna, save us. Be the guide for scientists working to understand this novel coronavirus. Lead them to a vaccine and to antiviral medications. Be the strength and hope for doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and all other medical professionals as they work long hours in overwhelming conditions. Safeguard their health and their hearts. Hosanna! Save us! Inspire your church, O oh God, with creativity and energy to continue sharing your love and grace and hope. The church is not a place or a building, and the church is not closed. May we see this time as a time of seed germination, nurturing our faith with study and prayer. May those who watch us on social media and in essential workplaces see in us that our faith is alive and growing, reaching like a fresh sprout out of the darkness toward the light. Hosanna, save us. We pray for those in our world whose troubles may seem forgotten right now in the shadows of COVID-19. For those whose relationships are broken and unhealthy, for those who battle addictions, for those who do not have the resources to stockpile, for those who have no home or place to shelter, for those who have chronic illnesses, for those who are waiting for test results or reeling from new diagnoses, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray especially for those on our hearts and minds. Hear us as we lift their names to you, O God. Hosanna, save us. Blessed are you, holy are you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. You are our hope and our salvation. 
Therefore we pray in your name and as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The crowds shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May we be always ready to share our blessings when we are sent in the name of the Lord. Let us with joyful hearts give of our tithes and offerings. join me in the prayer of dedication. In gratitude for all your blessings, we offer our lives and our offerings. May these gifts be used to relieve suffering and bring comfort in your world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord, accept and dedicate this offering and our lives to sharing Christ's love with the world. Amen.
are, whatever you are experiencing. If your heart is crying, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Know that God is answering your prayers. May you be filled with peace, assured of God's presence with you. May you have the mind of Christ Jesus as your path and your guide. And may you know the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.